scripture reveals to you the word of knowledge concerning a present and past and he gives it in an instructional way instruction is connected to it immediately obey his voice these things can come by way of audible voice they can come by way of vision they can come by way of dream they can come by way of prophecy always test the gift if it points back to emphasize and magnify the person of Jesus and His goodness and His compassion. The purposes of God are being done. My name is Jenny, and in this series, we are going to be discovering and exploring the marvelous gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, do you know that these gifts are meant to be powerful tools given to every believer so that it can strengthen our everyday walk of faith? In fact, it's there that we can live victoriously and efficiently. And the Lord has actually placed such importance on these gifts that He puts emphasis on every believer living continuously in these gifts until His return. Now to help us learn more about how to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit on a regular basis, let's welcome our guests together. They are Dr. Debbie Rich Rester. Dr. Kat Bailey. This program is going to be dealing with the second part of the gift of a word of knowledge. Why don't we go together into the Word of God and discover what He says concerning operating in this marvelous gift. In our discussion over the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God has been our primary source of information and wisdom. And along with that, we have the witness, the inner witness from the Spirit of God Himself. I want to bring back this truth that every single child of God has the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. And remember, from the beginning of time, from the beginning, even before the foundation of the earth, God said that He already predestined you to partner with Him in life. We were never meant to live this Christian walk on our own. There's no such thing as a Lone Ranger Christian. We have to be in an intimate relationship with Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And it is a two-way communication all the time. Remember, these gifts are here so that we can live efficiently, we can live victoriously, and we can live the higher life with God. That's what it's all about. While we are in this world, <laughs> we are connected to heaven itself. The culture of heaven, the wisdom of heaven, everything to do with heaven is living on the inside of us so we can represent a life of Jesus everywhere we go. That's what it is about operating in the the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, as you know, we are now in the second part of the gift of a word of knowledge. And I believe that so many of you have been blessed. We want to thank you already for all the emails you've been sending us. We want to thank you for the encouragement you have given us concerning these programs and how they have helped you understand how to practically walk in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So dealing with the gift, now particularly in the gift of the word of knowledge, if you remember, we spoke about it being a significant word that God has given you that He has revealed to you which you could not have known on your own about a specific fact or detail that is to do with the present or the past. That is a gift of a word of knowledge. It does not mean that you're a person who is generally knowledgeable. That is not the gift of knowledge. The gift of a word of knowledge is just that, is a fragment of information that the Spirit of God has revealed to your spirit a particular gift and it is for a purpose. When we receive the gift of the word of knowledge for somebody else, it's to let that person know beyond any shadow of a doubt that God loves them and that He's 
his intention for them is for their profit, for their benefit, and for their increase in life. And that is what we have to keep our focus on. It has everything to do with the love and the compassion and the goodness of Jesus directly communicating with the person we are ministering to. Isn't this a beautiful gift? Incredible gift. Incredible Patricia? Gift. When we established earlier in the other teachings about the function of the word of wisdom, we were taught that it deals with the futuristic thing and again, the things of God, but the indicators are it reveals the will and the mind and the purpose. Say it, the will, will the, the mind, mind and, and the, the purpose. purpose. But with the word of knowledge, he gives us some indicators as well. Not only is it dealing with present and past, but here's another indicator. It deals with people, places, and things. Say it with me, people, people places, places, and things. things. Again, people, people places, places, and, and things. things. So we got two things, it's present and past, and people, places, and things. So we can determine, okay, these are the indicators. Are we within the parameters of the boundaries? With the word of knowledge, it's so powerful, equally, in my opinion, as the word of wisdom, because let's talk about business investments and going into business with a business partner or the person that you're, th you're thinking about marrying or an area that you're planning to move to, a house you're planning to buy. With the word of knowledge, a, a lot of times you'll see that the word of knowledge will come and not only just warn you of things in the sense of negativity, but sometimes the word of knowledge can operate where it can benefit you in this sense that it's definitely something profitable always and positive. Even when it seems negative, it's positive because you end up on the, on the it profits you at the end. But let's say you're going into business with someone and, or you're going to buy a property or you're going to invest in something and there's some knowledge that you would never hold, know about past things, like maybe the foundation of a house or maybe something that missed the termite inspection, or something missed the sewer inspection. Are you all with me, ladies? You know? Or let's say if it's a person and they all suited up and they look like, man, they're the bag of chips and the dip. But as my <laughs> grandmother said, there's something in the milk. <laughs> I had an aunt very briefly. She was going to marry this man. He was a pharmacist. My aunt had never been married. Everybody wanted my aunt to marry. And in the natural, he looked like he was all of that. I mean, the chip, the dips, the potato farm, the whole nine yards. And the Holy Spirit revealed to her something in the past and in the present that he had another person. He had a whole other affair and relationship. And so he, right in front of her, like Debbie said, like when you get in the midst of a person, it gets revealed. And sometimes when you make physical contact with the person, like laying hands on, all of a sudden you have a gateway of a fragment of knowledge. So he was saying one thing, and she was having this other conversation with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit said, he's a liar. He has another relationship. So, all, so imagine this is coming out of his mouth. Wong, 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 wong. That's what he was saying out of his mouth. But a voice spoke from heaven, like with Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar. And the voice that spoke from heaven was the word of knowledge, revealing things in his past and his present. And my aunt began to say things to him, everything about the woman and this and that. And he was like, you know, you know, as African Americans, we don't turn pale, we turn mahogany. Okay, so he turned <laughs> mahogany, you know. And so he was like, how did you know that? And you know what? never came around again. That profited her. So what are some of the practical things that we can do? We shared in the last program that some of the things you can do is meditate the word of God. When you see, go through the scriptures and see what these gifts are in operation. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Another thing I want to add to the practicality of just practical things you can do to help develop the gift in you. The gift is perfect, but to develop your human spirit to the gift. Develop your human spirit to the gift. Develop your human spirit to the gift. Remember, the gift is perfect. We're treasures. You have a treasure, an earthen vessel. Pray in the Holy Spirit. So if you're watching and you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, the way you operate in these gifts, the gateway, the prerequisite, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. As you pray in the Holy Spirit, many times the word of knowledge will come while praying in the Holy Spirit. Haven't you have that happen? Yes. And as you're praying in the Holy Spirit, not only through interpretation, with tongues and interpretation, the word of knowledge will sometimes connect with thought. That is a power twin. And you now have a fragment of understanding of things in the past or present that you would never know until you prayed in the Holy Spirit. So the praying in the Holy Spirit, getting in the Word, meditating in the Word, and then here's another one. Here's the other part, the practical. When He reveals to you the Word of wisdom, the Word of knowledge, the Word of knowledge concerning a present and past, and He gives it in an instructional way, instruction is connected to it. Immediately obey His voice. Harden not your heart. 
immediately obey the instruction. Don't wait. Don't sit on it. Do it immediately because as you're quick to obey, you will develop a sensitivity to your human spirit. Some people's human spirit has been trained the wrong way. Like a child, you tell a child, if you don't go up there and make up that bed, there's going to be consequences. And if you don't go up there and make up that bed, don't let me have to tell you again. If you don't go up there and make that bed, I'm going to take your, your, your media privilege for you. Fourth time. If you don't go up there and make it, so now you've trained the child not to respond right. to the fourth time. When the Spirit of God reveals the word of knowledge or the word of wisdom or any of the other gifts, when he reveals it to you, quickly obey, quickly respond. Then that develops a sensitivity of your human spirit to that spiritual gift. Are you hearing me? You train your human spirit. So those are just some of the practical things that we can do on an everyday, simple, daily disciplines in learning how to develop in these wow, gifts. That is so good. That's so good. You know, it actually reminds me of, um, I was also watching another, you know, just, you learn so much from hearing all different ministers on this. And this one um, particular minister said he was really practicing to work in or to operate in this gift. And he walked into a Starbucks because he really said, God, I need to operate in this gift. And he walked into the Starbucks and he sat down and he said, speak to me, Holy Spirit, just speak to me. And there was a gentleman that sat down. He was sitting on his own at Starbucks and there was something that drew him to him immediately. And a, a word came up. It was like a, a name. I think it was Allison or something like that. And he thought, okay, okay. So he left his seat. He went straight to the gentleman and he said, I'm sorry to bother you, but is it by any chance, does the word Allison mean anything to you? And the man looked at him and, he, and then he really felt so silly, so foolish. And he said, um, no, not really. And he said, oh, I'm so sorry to waste your time. And he turned around feeling, oh, well, I tried. And before he walked out that door, that man was up from his seat and grabbed him. And he said, could you just explain to me what you just did? And he said, oh, I feel so foolish, but... Actually, I'm in the ministry, and I, I, I'm actually new. He was from a traditional background, and the Holy Spirit had been dealing with him. And I'm, I'm beginning to operate, to learn to how to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I really wanted to operate, and you know, just to practice this. He said, well, do you know that I have been crying out to God to help me learn about the gifts of the Holy Spirit? And when you came and did that, something inside of me said, go speak with this man. <laughs> he knows. He, he knows what's going on. I just knew when you did that, it resonated with my spirit. Well, they spent the rest of their time within the Word of God, learning together on how to operate in the gifts of the Holy wow. Spirit. So it is just amazing how everything is orchestrated. When He says something to you, and even if the human element comes in, don't stop. You get up. God had pulled him towards that man. He thought he had to have a name. He had to have something. But it didn't matter about that. The fact that God had drawn him towards him, got him off his feet in obedience, and he approached him. So even if you don't get given a word, or if you don't, given a don't get given a specific instruction, except you know you can't sit there. You've got to go to that person. Obey the Holy Spirit, and you will be amazed at what comes from that. Debbie. This is so good. You know, we've said many times in these programs that many of you are already operating in some of these gifts and just have not been aware of it. Right. And this will help you to become more aware. A few weeks ago in our church, I was in the middle of preaching. And in the middle of a sermon, I said, I stood in front of some people and I said, for instance, I didn't even, I was not even aware I was operating in word of knowledge. I said, Say one of you today could have had a miserable thought before you came to church. And I see them start looking at each other and giggling. And so we all made light of it. And I said, okay, I'll go stand somewhere else. And the congregation giggled. And I stood there and said, let's say that you found the thought coming to you today that everybody here at the church is so glad my wife is here, but they're just putting up with me for my wife. And he goes, oh, my goodness. And everybody burst out laughing. And I said, I'm going to go stand somewhere else and use a different example. By now, the church was just giggling. <laughs> and we realized that when I'm just using examples, we were operating in word of knowledge. Very good. And I said on another program that these things can come by way of audible voice. They can come by way of vision. They can come by way of dream. They can come by way of prophecy, someone speaking into your life. And just to give you an example, sometimes you can see things and you're, you're awake. It's not even a dream or a vision, but 
um, I was just, as you were sharing the bag of chips and the dip all dressed up, <laughs> I have one of those. Many years ago when I was still single, I was at, um, many years ago, 1993, I was at Pastor Rodney's summer camp meeting and, uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. And I had just testified. And a young man, maybe just a couple of years younger than me, all dressed up, very handsome. I'm single. He comes up and says, I'm a minister. I would like to take you to dinner and just get acquainted. And I enjoyed hearing about your ministry. I thought, well, there's no harm in that. We're both single people. He's a minister of the gospel. It's just after service. We go to lunch. He has the menu in his hand. I have a menu in my hand. I'm trying to decide spaghetti or hamburger. And I mean, my mind was not even on his motive. I look straight through that menu. Wow. I've never had this happen like this wow. ever again since. Wow. I'm looking straight into his heart and it's as though his, his spirit have words written on it. Wow. And I'm reading, if I can get to her, she'll take me to Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. Oh. And I will continue to use her till I get acquainted with him. And I'm like, and the waitress comes and says, are you ready to order? And I said, let's just make it something fast. This has to be a quick meal. And uh, he said, let's do this again. This was so nice. I said, thank you. I'm just too busy. Never told him what I saw. But the Lord rescued me. And I didn't come there saying, I'm not sure about this guy. Can you show me something? But he did. I actually saw those words written across. Wow. Yes. so powerful. Yes. That is so powerful and so important. So yes. important. You know, um, I have time for one story, <laughs> one testimony as well. And it, it's so good that you hear these testimonies because then you can relate to them. In the one uh, teaching that I was listening to, they spoke, it was actually um, Neil Ray's. He spoke about how he and his, his wife, they pastors and they were in a home cell. And in the home cell, they had a time of ministry. And there was a woman there that had been attending their home cell for, for a long time. So she was uh, quite uh, had a good walk with the Lord, but she had uh, it seemed like she had come to a ceiling concerning emotional issues for some reason. She just never had a breakthrough when it came to certain relationships and emotional issues. And it's, it's, it's amazing how, when we don't get to deal with things, even if we don't know how to deal with them, because they could be so hidden in the past, we can never really be free to move on in the things of God. And it just seemed like this lady kept meeting a ceiling, and they would pray for her. And and, you know, then it would be fine for a while, but it would always go back to square one with her. She had been um, divorced as well. Um, and obviously there was all that emotional baggage and stuff that had to, be deal that had to be dealt with. But nevertheless, while they were praying for her, the Lord revealed something to his heart concerning her. And he knew it was not the time or the place to speak to her. And he just kept it to himself. And that evening, he spoke to his wife about it. And they made an appointment to go and see this lady. And, when, and you must understand that there will be times when the Holy Spirit arrests you and you know it's like a hot potato on your tongue. If you don't say the thing now, then you'd be, you'd be stepping out of it. But there are other times when the Holy Spirit will say to you, like Debbie, you didn't say anything to that man. Right. And the Holy Spirit might say, not now, not now, but look. Anyway, so uh, they went home, they made an appointment to see this lady. They came with her, they had a meeting, him and his wife met with this lady. And he said, look, I don't want to be, I might be out of line. I might, I don't want you to ever think that what I'm going to say to you is to make you uncomfortable. But I really believe God wants to show you just how much he loves you and sees how stuck you are in moving forward with him and how you have cried out in your heart, God, I need to go further with you. I need to get past these issues, but they keep coming back. Help me. I need to deal with them. And he said, the Lord showed me that when you you were much younger, you went through an abortion. And he said, but it hasn't just been one, it's been several. And he said, and you've never been able to consolidate with the Lord over this. You've never been able to forgive yourself and you've never been able to have the Lord deal with this hurt. And it's carried through into every relationship that you have. You can get to a certain level or a certain place with that person of trust and suddenly you just can't anymore because you don't even trust trust yourself. And this woman began to weep. She wept before him. And again, it wasn't an accusation. 
Do you know what overwhelmed her more was that God would love her so much that he was willing to send a pastor to speak the very secret and deep hurt of her heart, to bring it out, to heal her and not condemn her. She knew without a shadow of a doubt that God was not angry with her, but he loved her so deeply that he wanted her to be free to move on with him. And so they ministered to her. Do you know that that woman has reconciled with her husband and today they are in full-time ministry together? Isn't that awesome? That is awesome. So coming back, and I know our time is coming to an end of this brilliant gift. I just, I so love this gift. God has given us His Holy Spirit that we can operate in a partnership with Him. When we cannot see things in the natural, when we don't understand things in the natural with our own intellect, the Spirit of God sees everything, He knows everything, and His intention is to reveal the secrets of His heart to us. It's not only so we can be healed, that we can be protected, but that we can minister His healing and his compassion and his love for others to walk in freedom, to walk whole, to walk delivered. That's what this gift is there for. It's a purpose to have the love and the goodness of God revealed to the hearts of everybody. It's really getting the atmosphere of heaven and letting it be manifest here on earth. But every time we've said this, remember, always test the gift. Always test the gift. If it points back to emphasize and magnify the person of Jesus and his goodness and his compassion, the purposes of God are being done. That is a gift that is truly of the Holy Spirit. Always make sure that it's not the person giving the gift that is magnified, but it's always Jesus that is magnified. That at the end of whatever has happened, glory is automatically given to God. When that happens, you can know it is an authentic gift of the Holy Spirit operating in us. Those of you at home who have any questions or want to know more about this gift, highlight at myfaithtv.com. Email us. We want to hear from you. For the rest of us, we'll be right back. Higher Life Seasons are now available through the Faith app. If we can just have that truth to pull us up, then you're not going to hear the sound of the negativity. That's right. View the latest episodes today by downloading the Faith app on Google Play or the App Store. Well, the atmosphere in this place is so intriguing. I'm telling you, we are so excited to learn more about these gifts. And I know that you at home are wanting to know more too. So you email us at highlife at myfaithtv.com so we can answer your questions. But again, here in the studio, there are so many questions concerning this gift of the word of knowledge. We're going to go straight to our studio audience and find out what questions are on their hearts. Okay, I just wanted to know... um, What's the importance of how you deliver your, your gift to someone so that they can take you seriously? It's not about you. Paul the Apostle said in Galatians 2 verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but it's Christ that lives in me. And the life that you now live, you live by the faith of the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. It is not your responsibility. You make of yourself no reputation. Jesus made of himself no reputation. Your assignment, your job description, your focus is to do what God called you to do and be obedient to that. You're not responsible for how they take it, what they do with it. It's kind of like when a person gets all bogged down with whether somebody believes I'm telling the truth or not. Your responsibility is not to convince them of your truth. Your responsibility is to tell the truth so your responsibility is to proclaim the word of the the word of knowledge that he's given you and what happens after that it's not your job description it's up to him that is awesome very true but then again remember people are not going to take you seriously if you're living in the world (laughs) and then you know just not living out your faith properly and then suddenly come up with a word of knowledge right understand that your walk has to show 
the fruit. There has to be fruit in your life. But then again, just like you said, Patricia, your responsibility is to hear from God and to deliver that word. And however they receive or choose to receive, that is really up to them. What did Jesus say? Just shake the dust off your feet. Shake the dust off your feet, absolutely. (laughs) But thank you for that question. Now, we do have time for one more question here in the studio. And before we go hear that question, I want to encourage you at home. Email us at highlife at myfaithtv.com so we can encourage you to be strong in this gift, to operate in it more frequently than you have. We can't wait to hear from you. But let's go straight to the studio and find out a little bit more about what is on their hearts. If you receive an instruction and in the natural looks impossible, do you take the necessary steps to go ahead or do you wait on God? First of all, any word that comes to you should confirm something in your heart. If I got a word saying I'm supposed to go to China, uh, and I realize that's more a word of wisdom right now, but and I never had a desire to go to China, I'm not going to start packing my bags and start buying tickets for China. I'm going to lay that on the shelf. If it's something that already is an answer to something you've been crying out for, Lord, I, I need a way to go to Bible school, and somebody delivers the word of the Lord, you're going to Bible school. And I would do all that I knew to do to start preparing for that. Get your passport. Uh, Yes, 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 absolutely. Get your passport. Make sure it's not expired as mine was when I came here. And yes, do all that you can. uh, If that is a confirming word to your heart, if it's from left field, you don't. And this, of course, this is such a broad question. If it has to do with relationships, especially you don't go out and start pursuing somebody trying because somebody said you're supposed to be mated up with that person. Let God do those things. But there are other things that, yes, we can do some practical steps if it confirms uh, something we already had in our heart. That is brilliant. Very nicely answered. Thank you, Debbie. Now, those of you at home, if you have any questions, I know I repeat this so many times, but I really want you to know that you can find out answers from the Word of God concerning these gifts of the Holy Spirit, just email us at highlife at myfaithtv.com and we can't wait to hear from you and encourage you. What an amazing time we have had here in the studio concerning the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have learned so much and not only helped us intellectually understand the gifts, but we've learned how to really hear from the Holy Spirit and operate in them too. Now, I would love for you to help me thank my panel who have been such an absolute blessing teaching us more about these gifts. audience. Now do not miss out on our next program as we go into the first part of a brand new gift. We're going to be speaking about the spiritual gift of discernment. Can't wait to get into that with you. So until next time, God bless you and goodbye. There's nothing in the Bible that says deja vu. Don't call it. Call a cat a cat and a dog a dog. He says discerning of spirits, which allows you to see. Because a lot of people think their gift of suspicion is the gift of discerning of spirits. It gives us a window into the presence of God right here on this earth.